Uh, I read Heart of Darkness, and um, an amazing book. And one passage in particular just leapt out and smacked me between the eyes. And I can't remember it verbatim, so I'll just read it to you. It is impossible to convey the life sensation of any given epoch of one's existence. That which makes its truth, its meaning, its subtle and penetrating essence. It is impossible. We live as we dream, alone. And that's haunted me since the age of 18. And I don't know what it was in my 18-year-old mind that resonated with, um, with that passage. But I think, you know, perhaps it's just the, um, the resonance of any kind of strongly articulated existentialist um, loneliness. But I wondered, you know, can we really be that alone? All of us? Together? It didn't make sense. We'll come back to that. So on the plane on the way here, um, I was listening to an audio book of Arthur C. Clarke's uh, Childhood's End. It's the first Arthur C. Clarke book I've actually read. Um, and uh, it's an amazing work, but of course I don't need to labour this point with this audience that, that uh, there's nothing so characteristic of an age's thinking as it's science fiction. And um, I mean, of, of, all, um, of all the science fiction writers, Clarke is, is, is remarkable for the extent to which his imagination was able to sort of re achieve an escape velocity from the culture of his time and really to, to think way ahead into, uh, into different times and places and to take us there. But uh, it got me thinking about, about the, uh, the fact of, of imagination and that our brains are actually not as... Um, our, our brains are not temporally bound. It's what we scaffold them with that limits us. In other words, to the extent that we're able to imagine the present that we live in, which Clark and, and uh, others of his age couldn't foresee, um, we are capable of imagining entirely different worlds in the future that we just don't at the moment. And I find that an interesting contradiction. So what's the relevance of all that for governance futures? Well, the relevance is that basically I think this is a, a massively missing piece from our public culture. That there is essentially no public culture of imagination. Yes, there's Dick Tracy and there's Star Trek and there's Arthur C. Clarke and there's plenty of stuff since all of that. But um, our conversations about the future and about the future of governance and the worlds that we could be choosing among, we do not have a culture of imagining those in any concrete way and then choosing among them wisely. We agonise over procedural details like deliberation, the weighing of alternatives, and, uh, and decision, which is the killing of alternatives when we make a choice. But where in that, uh, uh, I mean, that, that essentially becomes meaningless or close to meaningless when the alternatives are underimagined or drab or cliched or simply absent from the picture overall. And so um, my friend Natalie Jeremajenko, who's an engineer uh, and an artist, has a wonderful phrase, um, which I learned from her a couple of years ago, structures of participation. Her art is about creating structures of participation for people. And I love this phrase because I think it, it, it summarizes to me what good futures work does. It's create structures of participation for co-imagining. And so as I see it, governance, at least the design side of it, is about designing structures of participation for collectively shaping the common good. And that can look like the design of an event, like this one, or the design of a system, like the United States of America, or the design of, uh, of an intervention, like the one that I'm about to describe. Because my favourite experiential futures intervention is a perfect instance of the kind of uh, collective imagination that I'm describing. And it comes from the Arab Spring. So in January 2011, Tunisia ousted its dictator, somebody or rather Ben Ali, and uh, the economy started tanking. The revolutionaries hadn't expected su to succeed, and they didn't know what was going to succeed their, uh, um, the overthrow. Um, so, and, and what may have, uh, have ensued could have been actually much worse than what had been there before. You know, in these kinds of political vacuums, anything can happen. But a month later, on the 16th of February 2011, for a day on newspapers, television, and radio... Uh, they reported from the 14th of June 2014, three years and three months into the future. By the end of the day, that was the number one hashtag, c'est juin 2014, in, in Twitter. It was beginning to trend in France. And it began to change the public conversation to make a future for Tunisia imaginable, which catalyzed an actual change and a recovery in the wake of that revolution. So to bring it back to our starting point, um, I no longer believe that we are condemned to dream alone. I think that we can dream together. And to the extent that 21st century government succeeds, that's what we'll be doing on a regular basis.